Hello, hello, hello. What's up? This is Aaron Putnam with my lovely wife, Hillary Lockwood. Hey, hey. James is over there. I want to say on the one and twos, but it's not. I always want to say that. It's like 18. And we have a very special guest with us today. She's one of my favorite comics in Chicago, anywhere really. And we're sitting down to have a chat. Please welcome Whitney Chitwood. What's up? What's good up? To be, good to be down here in the cave again. Yeah, this is where it all goes <laughs> down. Back memories. <laughs> Mixing it up, right? Yep, yep. Mix it again. It's weird to be talking. We the last time I was here, I was just listening to myself for hours. Oh, so man, talk about listening to, to talk about listening to one of your sets. You're like a long an hour of it. Oh god. Oh god. No, it's great, but you got to do it right. Well, yeah. you have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm very professional. And yeah, that's for that. sure. <laughs> Like she tries, uh, Hillary tries to play the yeah, uh, the podcast listen. as soon as we leave. I'm like, turn it off, quit it. I Just, can't hear it now. I mean, I know that I probably. I mean, whatever I sound like, basically, you know, I'm so, ch- uh, what do you call it, parched when I talk. Sure. I don't want to hear it later. Like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you go? Okay. So you have you do a podcast every week. Yeah. How often other, do basically. you have podcast regret? Podcast? Afterwards, like walking away and then thinking about, do you ever feel like, oh <gasps> God, I shouldn't have? Oh. I haven't done that yet. I haven't felt that. That's good uh-huh. for for me because one thing, and if you notice, I'm kind of talking slower. Um, my mother, <laughs> of all people, who talks like she's um, really just in a hurry, she's like, you know, you're kind of talking like me, pretty fast on there, and, oh, I'm, and I go, Mom, 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 got me. What's up, Mom? She's probably listening. Um, hey, Mom. She still doesn't understand that she can't watch me through the purple. I iPhone podcast app. <laughs> you got to go to the Facebook. What? <laughs> She's like, I like listen to it, but I want to see it. She clicks on the. I'm kidding. You know, if it's, we're there now. Yeah. She's watching the watch party now. Oh, hey, Ma. Hey, Ma, Cindy. <laughs> um, so we, uh, baby, do you got? Do you have a sutra today? <gasps> do a sutra. I do. I do. And I, and I think it's a pretty good one because I want to let it lead us into some of the little uh, tidbits you gave us to chat about. So yeah. uh, this is Desa Dambahanda Chittasya. Barana. And this means uh, to singly focus your mind allows you to open into meditation. So basically, one pointedness or concentration leads you into getting beyond the thinking bullshit primal mind that we spin in all day long. That's it. Wait, so it's it's the idea not to connect to the primal mind, it's to uh move beyond it yeah because the primal mind is our front brain right it's our thinking brain that's judging all day that's pissed off that's yelling at everyone that's my whole is brand. that just me <laughs> <laughs> that's just you that's my whole, that that's is me. <laughs> <laughs> i judge me and then everybody else <laughs> it, it is though it's the judgmental brain that's self-criticizing self-punishing etc mm. we're trying to get beyond that into the back brain so we oh. have the manas but then the manasika which is very clear and clean. The Manasika. Yeah. Doesn't it sound delicious? Yeah, they all do. They really do. It's like that Sam Morel joke. He's like, how can you be mad at that? It's like, all that food sounds like, all that terrorist <laughs> talk sounds like great it food. Is, it is. Jesus. <laughs> Slaughtered his joke. But he's like, so, whatever, to, back in the, anyways. Uh, Sorry, Sam. <laughs> Tell him my jokes. But think about that. And then I was reading yesterday in the Bhagavad Gita, there's this beautiful little phrase called Nishkama Karma, which means selfless desire. Selfless I mean, that almost sounds like an oxymoron, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not. Really, think about it. Because you, you have could to do be selfish to... No, but if you could do whatever you do, let's say you could do comedy with, you, <laughs> with <laughs> no... Just pretend. Just pretend. Everybody just, just pretend. pretend. Just, for a just period. Just pretend <laughs> that you could do comedy. Let me finish my sentence, ass hat. Ass with hat. no ego or no <laughs> desire to want anything out of it. Oh, like pro bono comedy? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> better call Saul yeah. <laughs> hey I'm not here for the laughs do what you do yeah. to serve humanity and not because you want something out of it yeah well I okay on that point and you probably have one too I feel that I try to be vulnerable with my material which makes me mm. kind of unedited which hopefully I am giving a piece of myself when you I'm are there. Yeah. yeah I believe but, that you know but it's also but with some thoughtfulness of like how to write it into a joke without just you know, going up there and saying shit. What about you? Ed? I feel so. I feel so cynical. I think because I'm like, well, then sure, you're doing something for everyone, but you're getting out of like you're yeah. getting out you, of that. Yeah, and you, and so it's are. like a mutual beneficial mm-hmm. thing, and I think it's hard to think of it. I have a trouble. I have trouble thinking anything I do is selfless. I well, no yeah. matter how hard I intentionally try to be. You know, uh, altruistic. I feel I'm yeah. always. It's like ah, this yeah. is. There's a reason for that. I'm doing this to get yeah. something probably that I don't even know about that's hiding sure. away. I'm like the agendas or whatever. Like for sure. I mean, 
I try to be mindful of it now, especially in, in sobriety, just because they talk about, I mean, that's what gets you there. It's you, 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 like everything. That's what causes problems when you're being like self-seeking is what I try not to be. Self-seeking Ooh. meaning you're, cause like, yeah. for example, like when you put, I mean, this happens a lot with shows, like, you know, somebody, you put someone on a show out of town, maybe that with a, a big comic or whatever, that really you can tell that they could give two shits about that comic even. They're just there for themselves. And you see the agenda where you see them. Here's an example of like, hey, why didn't you tag the headliner in that? Or like, th- why did you say, why didn't you say you're happy to be on the show instead of making it all about like doing time on the blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you see a lot of that in comedy. There's a lot of self-seeking, especially with some of the younger cats, I think, where it's just like you see the... The, ed- the edging forward kind of thing. Right. Well, grinding. Everyone's trying to they're, they're grind. They're grinding. You gotta but, grind. Yeah. You gotta grind. Yeah, like yeah, doing bits in the car and shit. But I feel like that's <laughs> in bits in the car. <laughs> um, dude, Toomey has the best one. She's like, "Do you just do a fucking bit?" Not to me, but like, uh, do you just do a fucking bit. Don't do it. Not in the car, <laughs> man. Around. I do love. I do love like a like a like a joke machine, like a joke party. Like yeah. if everyone's yeah. on the same oh, yeah. page oh, and we're like, yeah. "Here, can I run this?" And will yeah, you yeah. like punch it up for me? And then you do one, and yeah, I'll help you. That's great. Super into that. But someone who's like, when you can tell, hey guys, uh, you know. You Boy, there's a lot of Christian radio stations. Yeah, Am I right? Did yeah, you notice? Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. There's a lot of them. Ugh. There are actually. That's a true story. On, on the way to <laughs> Fort many. Wayne. You know what's fucked up? This, I won't regress really too much, but when you, if you ever have the radio on, like I'll have it, like whatever, my thing will pop off the Apple Music or whatever, and you'll hear something. And you're like, and all of a sudden, like Jesus. You're like, no. <laughs> it's like if it's, no. the, if it's the devil's music, <laughs> why are you using the beats? Stop yeah. using the beats. <laughs> Get your harp out, you piece of shit. <laughs> your harp. Because we play piano over here and guitar. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know. Anyways, that was just off the whatever. I do, and it's also it's also like you get more terrified. But I find on the road I get more nervous about a place the higher on, like, the radio frequency sure. numbers the Christian station is. Like, yeah, once yeah, you yeah, pass, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, 98 uh, point whatever and it's a Christian station, it's like, oh, boy. they Oh, man, oh there's God. there's too many. I did a <laughs> show, like, a month ago in Howard City, which is between Muskegon. And it was just kind of like it's near nice shit, but actually right there. Just seems like they're burying people. Sure. But um, the, 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 after the show, the guys, you want to go over here to my house? We'll do that. I go, we're getting the fuck out of here. Go like, to my house. Like, where, do you want to park? Or like, come and we'll come over? Or what? I go, no, we're gonna leave now. We're, we're good. Like, it's three in the morning. We're leaving. We're we're gone. Yeah. I, like, I don't want to be here. Second location on a one nighter road show yeah, is yeah, a yeah. real real. <laughs> lofty or that funny ass. business. They're like, you're in Pentwater on Monday and Sagatuck on Thursday. What you do in between is your business. Fuck you. <laughs> no hotel. Wow. You just want me to just wander around. Yeah, find North. someone, make a friend. Yeah, oh, Eastern Michigan. Um, so go ahead, baby. No, think about that though. I mean, we are all right. We all deal with this level of ego that wants us to not only feel taken care of, right, but it's also that ego that says, "I want to be able to take care of others as well." That's the truly. Good time, right? That's what you're saying. It's the give and take. Right. Right. It's both, because I teach, and that's an amazing thing to do. But I'm getting so much out of that as well. I can't pretend for one second that I'm not, that that's completely selfless. What's the thing with the ego because you talk about? With like the fine line of the two egos or whatever? What is, that's something. The asmita and the ahamkara. So the asmita is like the arrogant ego that says I'm better than you. Um, not listening, and, yeah. Yeah. Not and the, the uh, <laughs> What are you going to say? Not listening as he fucking interrupts me again. Shall we? <laughs> and then there's the Ahamkara, <laughs> which is the I amness, which, which we never get rid of. Yeah, which is it's good because you need that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Awesomeness. Yeah, yeah. So I was, we were reading, so you grew up Lutheran? Yeah, I, I, I did. I grew up uh, very, very Lutheran. My uh, my family, so my, my parents divorced when I was really young. I was like five or six. And then my dad remarried. And my stepmom was very into very into church, but also like cool. Like yeah. like when my dad found my weed, my stepmom wasn't mad that I had weed. She was mad that I hit it so poorly. Right, right. right. Um, <laughs> so so we, we like every Sunday it was go. You go to church. Are Lutherans like, like Baptists a little bit like chill? Kind Lutheran of? is one removed from Catholic. So oh. Lutheran was like where Lutheranism was the first non-Catholic denomination started, and then everything came from Lutheran after that. Right. Okay. Um, and it was, fi- it was, fi- it was fine. I never, I never dug it. There was one Sunday where she let me not go to church and she came back after church and was like, okay, what, what, what did you do with your day? And I was like, oh, you know, I kind of laid around and I played some piano and just like chilled. And yeah. she was like, you're going to church because you didn't learn about anything. Oh, <laughs> and- my God. What about you, baby? 
Yeah, no, my parents were hippies, which was amazing. Oh, dope. Um, but then they moved us to Michigan, and my dad was a preacher for like, I don't know, it felt like five minutes, but <clears throat> it was like two years. So we went from being like living on a working farm with tons of land and totally free, naked all the time, to living in this little tiny place with no TV and no radio. And he just flipped, yeah, the, it was weird. flipped the script real quick. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, he grew up very religious, so it makes sense, and it's always kind of in there. Mm -hmm. um, How did he meet your mom? They grew up together. They got married at like 19. Oh, wow. Yeah. So was she a, like free, was like a Dharma and Greg situation? And no, they both, they both were pretty free and open, but then when they went down that road, they both went. Really? I mean, they both went down the religious road, yeah. Yeah, I think your mom's it, pretty It religious. didn't last very long, though. Right. I mean, I think we're all spiritual. Sure. I think there's a I big difference. I feel like your, your dad was doing a little bit for that. But also, what, he liked the being on the, the spotlight with it, probably, yeah? Probably, yeah. Hmm. I do think there's a difference between spirituality and religion, though. I feel like those sure. are two very different things. I have a hard time with the concept of a higher power, mm. I yeah. will say. And that was actually um, one of my... I tried, to, I tried to go through... I tried to do AA for a little oh. bit. Not a little bit. I went to, like, two meetings. Um, but... I just I couldn't get past the higher power thing. It was a real like sticking point for me, and I wish the that I wish there was a different. I don't. I haven't searched out hard enough, like an avenue that isn't AA to like assist with not drinking anymore. Right. right. Um, but I, I that just turned me off well, so like, much. Re on read it. Russell Brand's book, but it's because like, your your higher power like this is for me too. I've never. I'll tell you what happened when I had uh, an awakening for me, mm -hmm. when I actually looked up and went, I feel like, like my friend has a bit about it too. Like everyone's got to believe in something. Like if, sure. if someone's trying to, a bear is trying true. to murder you is what his premise when he's like, you're not going to be like, Oh, I don't need anyone. You know what I mean? You're going to say something. So yeah. it's like, there's something going on. Someone made all the birds and the bees. I don't know if it was the stars, whatever, but just the beautiful creation that mm -hmm. everything is. So sure. there's a force or whatever, but I'm um, with my higher power. Like I just felt like when you open up enough about, that when you need clarity and you let let it in, that's kind of a, an, a someone's pushing. It's not someone, but some energy is pushing that, and that's really right. the higher power. And the higher power for me just became kind of like believing that that I could be okay. Like I I, I let I got off myself a little bit for me. So I don't I don't yeah. pray, I don't pray to God. I mean I was raised sadly. I mean the way I was served religion is the reason. You know my dad uh, was a Jehovah's Witness, but oh a, wow a drunk one. And a right. hypocrite, like kind of a hypocrite about it, which is really sad. But it's like it's very confusing when yeah. someone's like, you know, you can't celebrate birthdays. Um, what else? No, you can't jerk off. That's not good either. And, you know, it's glug, like glug. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, what like why can't I rules? do anything human? <laughs> you know what I mean? I even said it once. I was like six. I was like, as he caught me masturbating or whatever. I was like, six, I six. Jesus. Yeah, well, you know, just or maybe eight. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> but I, but I, I, I found that I was like, you know, I want to talk about this. Show me in the Bible where it says it's wrong. And he came out with. He, they always have an angle. Jehovah's Witnesses always have like, yeah. okay. well, but it'll be twisted. He'd be like, it says where you're not supposed to s spill your seed. Okay. And I go, dude. Couldn't that be like a farming thing? Yeah, and I was like, bro. <laughs> well, you, gotta <laughs> hang, you gotta hang on because you made a lot you of know. things. And I was like, and why are my hormones like when I'm twelve, I'm like, my hormones are raging. Right. What is your problem, dude? Right. You know what I mean? I got in trouble in um in Sunday school actually. We had this just just shit of a teacher. It was just like this woman who was teaching Sunday school, she didn't even have any kids, and she wasn't even, like, a teacher during the... It was like she couldn't be a teacher, and so she's like, oh, I'll go teach at a Sunday school for yeah, free. who's going to let me in, yeah. She was... The, oh, she... At the end of class... We used, I used to fight with her all the time, and at the end of class, she said, okay, before, I was, I don't know, 11, 12, and at the end of class, she goes, okay, before you leave, everyone line up, and before you leave, you have to tell me who was the only perfect person. Oh, no. Everyone gets in a line. We're going through. Everyone says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. It comes to me. She's like, what? Who was the perfect person? And I said, no one. No one. And she was like, sit down. And so I had to sit. Everyone went out. But that's true. She, no one's perfect. Yeah. And she sat down and was like, why do you think that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, <laughs> was not a perfect person? And I said, well... You know that time that he was going into wherever, I think it was like, I don't know, Nazareth or something, yeah, yeah. and he needed a donkey, and they were passing by like a bar, and he was like, hey, disciple, get me the donkey, I want to ride that donkey, and if the dude who owns it is like, that's my donkey, be like, hey, no, it's for Jesus, it's cool. Uh -huh. There's no way that dude thinks Jesus is perfect. He's like, <laughs> I know. <It's> Jesus <laughs> is a donkey stealer. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> not. Oh my I don't want to talk about it, but yo, Jesus stole my donkey and it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then that poor dude couldn't tell anyone because everyone loved Jesus and he's like, I hate Jesus. This is the thing with the religion. <laughs> Wh- whatever makes people a little bit better, you know what I mean? Just sure. Because all we're really trying to do is be okay. Completely. And, and, you know, like for my grandmother, she was a devout Jehovah's Witness. Weird story. Though. This was, I was crazy about it. My mother and um, my uncles and stuff, they were all, it was kind of forced on them by their, my grandmother, Jehovah's right. Witness. My dad was not raised that way. And he ended up, when he was with my mother, when they were like 19 and split up, he ended up being friends with my grandma and became a Jehovah's Witness. And then he went really? crazy. And then he went back into his old ways, which is like, that's not what Jehovah's Witnesses do. Right. You, you can't do that. You don't, I mean, I mean, your mother-in-law is very proud of you, yeah, but yeah, now you're yeah. ruining it. I know. Cause I'm, and, then, and then one and one day, and I was like in 10th grade, he's like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> you know, like, thanks, man. Great. You missed a lot of birthdays. Um, yeah. Well, it is. I mean, I think like the purpose of the what I believe the purpose of any religion should be is just to admit that we all want to feel love. Yeah. We all want sure. to mitigate suffering yeah. and we all want to get along Absolutely. and like, and everything should be the avenue to that. Right. So maybe that's, I mean, if, if that can be like, yeah. if a, a belief in like genuine desire for, or like an innate goodness in everyone, sure, that sure. could be a higher power thing. Cause I, guess. I mean, cause it's just too messed up with the religion. That's why I don't like really partake is that, you know, all the Christianity is out the window. Like all the things that people do are not Christian. You know what I mean? If you're in Indiana and you got somebody breathing down your neck in South Bend with their, you know, pro life's uh, sign and they're like, they got like, they're they're possessed. It's like, wow, what's happening. And Christianity was just the Mormonism of a long time ago. Yeah. And no, I feel like there's, I love the Mormons though. They're hilarious. My friend, I grew up with this guy, John Willingham. Uh, He, uh, he, uh, (laughs) they, they have three levels of heaven. And we were like 12, and he, I'm like, give it to me again, dude. He goes, I drink Coke, but I'm going to go to medium heaven. Or like, you know, <laughs> but if I was my mom, my mom doesn't do anything. Oh She's God. going to the high heaven. I go, and who who told you this, Tom, <laughs> Jerry, who, who was it? <laughs> sounds like a sounds like an old white tale. Yeah, <laughs> you know? completely an old white tale. <laughs> get a bunch of white people together. We're going to tell these stories. But yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty bad. I do think at the end of the day, though, if you sit down and you pare down this conversation for real, that we do absolutely all believe something, whether it is sure. the circle of life or science or medicine. And truly, if you keep peeling that down further and further, it's the same thing. Yeah, it kind it's of the is. the same thing. And I think it, I, I like revel in the bullshittery of it all mm-hmm. because like psychiatry, very helpful, very effective and, sure. and like changes people's lives and helps them break through things. But... If if tarot reading or astrology was a prominent practice of rich white dudes, yeah, sure, then that would be what psychiatry is, yeah, because it's all it's, it's like a it's, it's like an assembly of guideposts, sure, mm-hmm. essentially, I think, right. Mm-hmm. What I've gathered too is, I mean, between my experience with yoga because of Hillary and like twelve stepping because of AA and like Buddhism. I was SGI in LA for La Soka Kakai. Oh, wow. So I was I was Yam Yo Hum Yang Yam Yam, you know. I, I, I mostly I think I was doing it for some some nookie, maybe? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I was in LA. I was like, sweet, sweet like, Buddhist puss. I'm like, Herbie, Herbie Hancock's a Buddhist. I'll be right there. Who else is getting lit no, over really, here? Tina like Turner? A, uh, Richard Gere? I was like, damn, yeah. give me some beads. No, but uh, as, as, all as, movie stars. As, but, but we're all just trying to calm down, and we're all trying to be a better person. And all of its, all the stuff in the AA book is really based out of Buddhism and yoga and just consciousness of like how to treat other yourself so you treat other people because once you're really good to yourself you're pretty much a good friend right you can be a good friend right. to someone else. when you're it so, sounds so corny but once you're a good friend to yourself you're like people want to be your friend like that guy it shows up like really yeah. shows up like you know you like it's like people show up for you in your life the ones that really matter the ones that you call no matter what good or bad chop it up hang out, you know, I mean, you're lifelong, you're like your homies, whatever. But how you feel about you is what you do give to everybody I mean, in the world. So mm. if you love yourself, that's the way well, that you love and other someone people. like me, I mean, for, for 10 years, my best friends never left my side, but they were like, why do you hate yourself so much? And then when I got better, I was like, wow, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to be around me at all. And right. I also, I also was conscious enough to realize that, you know, the way I thought about, like, I could never imagine me putting up with the shit that I put up with 
But so then I was, I, I, I let my, gave myself a break with that. I'm like, no, but you're different, and that's why you can see it now. You know what right. I mean? But because like, yeah, like a forgiveness. You no, know, no, because that whole thing, as far as like, you know, basically when you evil shit that I would do to people, if someone gave me just a smidgen of that, I would have been like crying like bloody murder. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, but I learned that that's just when you when when you're drinking in the morning. At 9 a.m., you know what I mean? You become kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> but, um, you know. So well, that's... I found too recently. So, like, the last two years, I mean, I've been doing comedy for a, a while, but the last two years especially has been, like, singularly focused work, sure, sure, work, sure. Just nonstop work, like, focused to work. Yeah, yeah. And I had this moment the other day where I was like, I don't, I feel like I don't, I'm not connected with anyone, man. Like, I have a lot of friends that I mm. that I love being around, but I don't have, like, yeah. there are, I don't know that I could be like, oh, I need to call this person. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the person I need to call when I'm going, I, like, haven't established that in my life because I haven't shown up sure. beyond, sure. like, we're doing work together and we get on and it's very yeah. fun and, like, we're doing this thing, That's we're working right. on this project, and then... But I was also raised in musical theater. Yeah. So I was primed, like Ray, like first first show I was six months old. I played a baby in the musical baby. And mm. I, so it was these stretches of two months, a new 25 people were all thrust yeah, yeah. together. And it's, you never have cared about anyone as much as you care about all of these people. And then it's over. Yeah. And then you wait and then the next one comes sure. and it's. And I don't like, I've learned that I recently, that I don't like that about myself. I'm trying to figure out how to move outside of the circle of right. the project. Sure. You absolutely. Know? You, um, you've been in you know, serious relationships? I do. I, uh, I have a, I have a boo and we've been together for two years. Two years. Nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. There yeah. You go. Two, well, yeah. Almost two years. There you go. Pretty good. Pretty, um, pretty yeah, good. Yeah. I'm pretty fortunate. I don't know what show is. What? I did all those shows. Yeah. Oh. Oh God. Uh, She's let's always see. the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat was nice. the show that happened every year at yeah, my mom's yeah. theater for Christmas. That was the Christmas show. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> what were other fun shows? God, a bi a billion. They, they were really into new shows. Yeah. So like anything that would come like right off Broadway, then they would right. then they would do it in there theater i just i mean i, I saw jesus so christ cool. superstar in, in, sure. in paris oh wow jean jacques superstar <laughs> i was like yeah, yeah. baby I, I got dragged yeah I mean, because i went i mean i went there with a friend and we were skating and then mom's like we got pick oh, we got tickets to this thing i was like ah go it was all in french i just was blown away just, wait just, you were skating i was out there skateboarding get out of here yeah with all my with some people that i know from paris <laughs> some nigerians actually that live in um paris but um then i stayed with their family it was such a great two weeks and then uh we ended up seeing that show <laughs> yeah jean jacques that's all, all the french or parlez vous francais that's it yeah yeah we oui, we oui, we oui. but well anyways what was what was going on that's amazing i didn't know you used to do you still skate i still skate yeah oh i'm uh, an aggr I, aggressive inline skate Okay, there you go. I, I, I mean, I got an independent <laughs> tattoo on my elbow. I mean, I've been skating. Oh, my, yeah. I've been skating my whole life, and I, you know, that's I'm always that's that skating saved me though. I was a skate yeah. rat, really. Like, and the thing is, what I realized because, as she knows, we grew up together. It's like I was kind of a look like a troll doll, like Munchie Chi when I was younger. You know, that just, is not, what we call it. Bad, right? I did nickname no, like the, the, the big blue eyes, but the weird and hair kind of. Nice but I, I just I didn't grow up that <laughs> quick, so I was kind of like. You I had was, a crystal in your belly button. Yeah, you know? right, yeah. right. And I wasn't into all the jocks. And, I was like, and, and then I found my freaks, as I like to say. You find your people. Oh, for sure. And the skates, and we were like, no one else mattered. Mm -hmm. yeah. We drank together. We got all the girls. We skated. It was great. I mean, that was our life. It was fun. But so we didn't care. And we met. I met kids from all different schools because we were all skaters. Yeah, because so you're all... Because you're all misfits. You're like, yeah, I yeah. get picked on too. What's up, dude? You know what I mean? Did you street or street park? skate and vert yeah. everything, and I still skate them, but I can't. I can only skate transition now. Yeah. Uh, if I go out and start feeling froggy, and I'll just uh, break my femur. <laughs> yeah. For no, sure. because you don't you don't bend anymore. You, I mean, my, I'll break. Yeah, he'll break. But she knows about my skating, right? I do. She gets she she kick flip. That's how you got her. You I, kick flip right up to her. No, but if, no. I, if, I, if, I, if I the thing about it, this is about skaters, you got to know. <laughs> you can always tell if someone can really skate by their push. Yeah, and I got to push. My push is That's legit. That's true. Because because when you see, if I see somebody push, oh my god, I would murder. So I I can't even. <laughs> stand. Everyone should know that. But another one, if you see a kid walking around with a skateboard holding it by the wheel instead of the oh, the sure. tip, he's a T dog. You know, they're yeah, T dog. He's yeah, a T dog. We take a shit, but you know, not, that's back in there. We don't do that. Anymore. I'm sorry for all the skateboards I took at a market era in San Francisco. Oh, no. 
Uh, really? Did you you lifted boards? No, we just kind of, we just mess. You'd vibe people a little bit. It's bad. It's, I'm glad kids don't do that anymore. Oh, like from other skater. Yeah. Well, just kids they, like yeah. they come to the spot and be like, "Yo, what's up?" You know. Anyways, that's bad news. But I don't like it that it's so so like. They're all, they hug now every five seconds. Good trick. Good trick. It's like, it is very, it's very lovey now. Come on, man. Yeah. I love you, man. And they, everyone's got their ear pods in when they're skating. Yeah. The the headphones in while skating is really interesting because 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 it was about like (coughs) hanging out with everybody. At least for like, because a session used to have, I don't know where we're getting onto all this. Is this too much? No. So like a session back (laughs) in the day was you'd all meet up together and you're learning tricks and you're skating. Now kids watch it on ESPN and they're trying to get lines together so they can get sponsored. Right. So they just they go to parks, and those kids don't know how to skate everything. Yep. We used to skate down down the hill, hit all the stuff on the way, end up on the other side of San Francisco, and then go back up to Muni and go back down, and then we'd hang out and drink 40s. Like These kids are now like, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get sponsored by Red Bull. Uh, I don't, I, I don't when, like it that the jocks are trying to get into the skateboarding. Right. They can fuck off. Nike, yeah. Nike skateboard. Well, that's mm. good shit, but I mean, I mean, like all the kids now, they yeah, never yeah. would have done it, but now the soccer moms are like, you can skateboard, Tommy. There's money there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I remember, I remember the like, the huge letdown that I went through when I realized that to film, like to film a spot in a skate video, you would, people would do the trick multiple times. Oh, for sure. Because to me, it was like, oh, they're, they're just, they're just like out there and then they, they caught it on film. How cool is that? Oh, but no, no yeah. they're no, but the at guy, the spot. Yeah. You're lit. It's yeah. all set up. Well, now, especially because, I mean, it has gotten that way because it's so big now. I mean, I have friends that are, are retired pros and pros and friends in LA that like, you know, yeah, when don't you get like heavy sponsors and now it's such a big business. Yeah. Right. You, got, you got, now that we used to go to spots and you get run out and you <laughs> hope you got the trick. Yeah. And now they'll just be like, um, Nike would be like, we're renting the parking lot. Sorry. You know what I mean? Right. Which is cool for all that stuff. And I get sure, all the business, sure, part, sure, sure. but some of the kids that are involved in it, like I like a more, a soulful skater, someone that's got his own thing going on or she, yeah, or they, whatever. But it's like the people that like, um, they're just, just like, I'm in it. Yeah, man, this is competitive. Like when you go to a punk rock concert now and some kid slam dancing, but he's literally punching people in the face. That person needs to go away. <laughs> yeah. Know? And it's, yeah. It, there's such a double edge. Cause they don't get it to it. With the, like what, if it, the increase in popularity also increases the accessibility, the douchebag, which is yeah. great, which is bad, but then also great. Cause then yeah. people who didn't have access before you get know, the access, but you're also left. You with know what that. it is with well, skating? It's yoga too. I, it ruins the yeah. integrity basically. I think right. maybe yoga yeah, comedy the accessibility and is great. Losing the integrity is not great. I think what happens with definitely in uh, c- comedy, I think, and in skateboarding, at least they, they always reset themselves because there's a purity about it where all of a sudden it gets back to like, I'm sick of it, man. Let's go, let's go write some jokes or like whatever. Or like, let's go skate. It, it ends up, it ends up resetting yeah. itself because all the, when all the riffraff goes away and all the hype and then all the clubs close again and people that really do comedy, you know, it does do that. Yeah. When is this bubble good? This bubble, this bubble's got to burst. Bubble yeah. is, I thought it was going to burst when, um, whatever, what was the streaming platform that was just oh, comedy? Oh, so. I, oh, I was like, that, when CISO went under, I was like, oh, okay, dude, all right, I, this is, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the only time I'd watch something on my television, i go, they don't know that it looks like this? It was like, what is happening? Right, and I was like, oh, okay, this you, is, this some, is yeah. overly, oh, it's oversaturated now. Oh, yeah, but it's yeah, still, yeah. it's even. Because everyone was trying to grab it. Put it on Sling. I got a special coming out on Sling. You yeah, know what I mean? and like, and the, the Comedy Central, like, oh, dude. Facebook things, which are great because there's so many people that we know and like yeah, so many right. of our friends are getting these awesome opportunities, yeah. but then yeah. it's like, yeah. it's so yeah, many it's, people it, are getting it yeah. and you're like oh it's not I, even that these people, people you, like these people who got it I wish it was a much bigger deal because they yeah. should be having a bigger deal thing yes. happening to them I mean then if you yeah. talk to some of the like bigger like uh Bobby Kelly just finally got like a, a degenerates Netflix thing I mean right these guys you know, people that have gotten things before people that are, are just murder it's just how the business goes and then it's like oh everyone's got Netflix but you know there's I think they're starting to reset and make sure that it's all quality you know what sure. I mean mm-hmm. where there's just so I mean, yeah, some some of those fifteen minute ones. That, that international one was crazy. It's just like they're just trying to grab every yeah, kind of. Weird. They're trying to grab everything, and I like Deanne Smith was on there. I loved hers too, but like Love they were telling me about like the way they film them is kind of the problem now. Because like you can stop though, like in the middle, and go. I want to do that joke over. Right. So there is a weirdness about it. So it's it's probably hard to kill as hard as you do. Maybe like just when you have a great night or whatever. Right. Well, in the the fifteen minute ones that Mateo did. And I don't know Mateo, but uh, I know people who know Mateo. And, like sure. they're talking about, they do like, f- I think they do like six or seven right. 15 minute sets sure. with the same crowd. 
Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, it gets a little, you, you're burning these people out. Yeah, and, and it, it gets a little, and it's also just, it's just a little awkward because it's just kind of like the way when you see the finished product on someone too, it's like, it seems real quiet. Like, all, you quiet, know what I mean? Instead of just like, distant. give it up for like, you know what I mean? It's like, for, for, something's off on the producing. Right. But anyways, what are you going to do? I wanted to ask you about, what do we want to ask any about the, yeah, the Oh, wait, first of all, I want to know like yes. the trajectory. So was it Jersey, LA, Boston? Oh no! So I, um, so I moved to New York when I was nineteen. I was doing theater and did theater for a chunk, and then was over that because I've been doing it for like sixteen years at that point. And mm -hmm. then started doing like open mics and stuff, and was doing comedy in New York, and then met someone who lived in Jersey. And she and I started dating, and then I moved out to Jersey. It was the, it was the Gay Jersey Shore, Asbury yeah, yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And out there, I like I, it was. I learned to surf out there, which was crazy. And I managed this restaurant that was right on the boardwalk. And there were like three restaurants, and then a surf shop in the middle of it that was all owned by the same people. And you yeah. could walk in between them. Yeah. And so, like every morning before work, we'd go, we'd go do yoga, and then go surf, and then we would go to work, which was dope, so cool. It was such a good vibe. The first time I learned to surf, actually, we got done with yoga, and one of the husbands of the owner. The owners uh, was going out to surf, and he was like, "Do you want to? What do you like? You, you and Chelsea want to learn?" And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, for sure." <laughs> and so we grab these big boards, we go out, and I'm just in like a just in like a sports bra and some like yoga shorts, and we're learning to surf. And my my tit fell out of my ah. sports bra <laughs> so many times, so many times. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I don't have to buy him dinner now, or like yeah, thank yeah. him in any way because I guess <laughs> this is the this is it." Which also, it's a very small boob, so I maybe I should have <laughs> still bought him dinner. Um, uh, that was the vibe was super cool out there because I love it in Jersey. Yeah, the whole thing was very like it was it was very like yummy and crunchy and like yeah. very at least that like sect of it. Yeah, and there was there was this concert one time that was a it was an all day yoga concert and it, the Stone Pony if you know the Stone Pony, yeah, the Stone Pony yeah. which is where like Springsteen started and it was this concert that oh god what the, I forget all of their names it was like four different very like very like yummy singers one of them was a white dude with dreadlocks which was like I love that they say like, yummy Trevor uh, Hall somebody like that Trevor Hall it was yeah, Trevor yeah. Hall it was Soja oh you know oh that's I do. Trevor Hall is great she knows a rapper yoga guys like, get that guy away from me <laughs> I love I MC do love Yogi Trevor Hall great. MC Trevor Yogi MC Yogi that's dope that's great. he wasn't uh, who was the guy who sang a day I'm gonna go on today but I'll be but more I see the uh, I know one thing I love you that guy, whoever that guy was, the headliner. Okay. And I was going because Brett Denon is the singer that I really like, and he was on it. And so there was this, you could do yoga during the day, and that guy who was the headliner person would just like played guitar, and it was a bunch of, awesome. it was like me and all moms, yeah. like yeah, just yeah. doing <laughs> yoga on the beach. Very like, very fucking like good feels, good vibes. And then the concert was moving over to the, to the Stone Pony outside, huge, like huge outdoor bash oh, yeah. where I just drank so much alcohol. I had like done so much oh good God. yoga and then drank so much alcohol and he talks about that. I ruined myself. It was the <sighs> stupid it was like on my twenty first birthday I got an hour and a half massage and then drank that night. Like an idiot. <laughs> like Right? Have you? Well, Hillary has I mean, her, her, her know, class on Sunday. They, they call it church, where it's like everybody comes. Everyone that's like all of her good like students that she's had along for a long time, not good yeah. students, you know. But uh, she can always, you know, everyone's had a long night or whatever, and the class gets real hard. It's like we're gonna get that out, or, you know. You just yeah, smell like it. it smells. Oh, you just yeah. smell it. it just right. she'll, she'll twist them up enough where it's like you know just ring them what you, out. That's what yeah. you gotta do. You can tell if it's food. We, we laugh so hard when you weed. said uh, I undo all the yoga after it. Oh, that totally happens. But that's how you reset, though. I mean, it's like then you go and do it again, right? And you go and do it again. I needed another all day yoga retreat yeah. to, to yeah. get rid of the night. Do you still practice? <laughs> not, no, not Why enough. I used to, know? because I am, uh, I am lazy if it's not comedy. I <laughs> found because I put so much, I just yeah. put too much energy. I need to become a per, if anyone's like, what? I don't have hobbies. We, her and I were talking about, we want to start, like, I can't, first of all, I, go to very no shows if I'm not working really right. but I'm like I was like we gotta go sit, get into a band or something like I gotta go do something right like yeah. I, I was talking to this comic in New York and he's like he's always seeing a band or he's like when he's on the road too he's always trying to find something to do when he's there instead of just sitting in the hotel room like they're talking about Bill Burr back in the day would like went to every stadium in every state that he was in so like this guy's trying to go to see a band everywhere he goes right. just to like give you some culture something and, else because oh, man it's just comedy I'm tired man first of all comedy yeah. if you're just surrounded by comedians <laughs> all the time 
it's not you're not learning anything. No, you know what I mean. None of us can because it's just like it's just so like that. You got to get out and see other people. I love the idea of doing that. I do. I love the idea of let's get dressed up, let's go do yeah. something. But by the end of the day, I mean, two businesses, two teenage boys. It's I just want to sleep. Yeah, I yeah. literally just want to go to sleep. We're tired. Yeah, it's We're hard. And, boring. I, and I've done like I've been I boulder. And so that's a hobby, I guess. But I, I, even that, I've fallen out on it? that, like indoor rock climbing. Oh, sh- but I, I, bouldering I'm is more, like without I'm, the I'm ropes. mortified by that. Oh, I'm, it's even so you fun. walk back when I get out of the laugh factory, I walk home sometimes, and that one that's on oh, the left, yeah, the... there's always some girl there, like ah, I'm like that looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, and I just think about terrifying. someone to be like, hurry up, you know what I mean? Oh, no. I want to ask you too. So we we saw the one. What so the. Th- the third floor of where you lived was a, a swingers place. Oh yeah. Okay. Did you, so when so you I want to know about this. Sex there, parties, what did you yeah. do? Okay. So after, <laughs> yeah. after New you said Jersey, you worked the sex after New parties. Jersey, I moved home for a little bit <laughs> to my hometown, and then I moved out to LA. And I was living in this artist commune that was like off a, of Sixth Street or something. It was it was downtown. Yeah, it yeah. was like in the garment district. All over, yeah. And we so there was the second floor was a gallery space and we would have to like work those events just to live there was like a hundred dollars and you got uh, produce and eggs included and there were two huge kitchens and everybody was, like was in co-op. the film industry and every it was very yeah. cool yeah. Yeah. i think i heard about everybody that. ended up working at this one like weed farm which was very they all got like <laughs> each other employed so it was just 20 uh, people like funny. going um but so you'd work events and there would be like we like Hugh Hefner's son had a would come have parties there all the time. Tyra Banks had this dinner there once. It was just this long table in the gallery. And we walked out and it was like, oh, so that's who we're giving food to. Right, right, right. But the the floor. You up, saw her forehead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm kidding. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tyra. Up. I agreed to. I was like, yeah. Oh no, <laughs> oh, wait. What have I agreed to? It's okay, she got a big forehead. <laughs> oh my god. Bro. And the floor above it was this this flop this other flop housey place, and they had they had sex parties every month. <sighs> Once a month sex parties. There were different themes. And you could work the sex party. Like, you could be a bartender at the sex party. (laughs) And then, inevitably, eventually participate. But otherwise, we weren't allowed. You weren't... If you weren't working it or you weren't, like, on the invite list, you weren't allowed to go. But I just moved in, and I didn't have keys yet. And so to get in... To my ah. apartment, I would have to go up to the third floor and go through there and climb down through the fire escape. Excuse me, can I step on your buttocks? Well, and I showed up, I showed up and I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, and I showed up and there was someone with a clipboard and I was like, oh shit, I live downstairs. And they're like, you can't come through if you're not invited. And I was like, God, can I, I have to get to my home. And she's like, I'm sorry, you can't. And I was like, can you just, and she radioed, so they have radio, like very, it was an operation. Yeah. She radioed, I was like, okay, but this lady's here, she's still down. And then talked and like, okay, all right, you can go through. But you can make no eye contact with anyone. You can walk through, <laughs> but you are not it's allowed. Like eyes wide shut. To look this is really weird. Completely, and I was <laughs> escorted through, and I had to look down. But I, I like peeked, and the theme, <laughs> the theme for that night was, uh, f- was like fur, not furry, but like fur. So there was someone in like a big head, like yeah. antlered headdress, and just everybody. It was like glitter. It looked like a gay buffalo exploded. Oh my just, god, that's <laughs> hilarious. Oh man, it was like people on top of people. It was. <laughs> Oh man, I, I've heard about <laughs> different sex parties. It's it's wild for me. I'm glad I'm getting less. I mean, you don't like it, but I mean, I don't think I'm going to be like a very like sexually like just like oh, when I'm older, I'm not going to be like oh my god, I just sure. I need to really start keep this going. I'm going to be active, but like just normal. Yeah, I went to my I like participated <laughs> in my first. Sex, I'm saying sex parties. That's a young man's game. Yeah, yeah that's a young person's game. <laughs> don't look at me. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Get in there, James. Oh. What do you do down here when you're not podcasting? Huh? I can't talk about Bring it. Bring out the gear. I see swords. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> a clipboard right over there. <laughs> I think I saw that scene in Pulp Fiction. Gross. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's cool, though. It was weird. It was very weird. It was I, wild. I knew it was downtown because, I mean, I feel like I've heard of something like that downtown as well. And it's yeah. like my friend's skateboard uh, one of the, is down there, like Cordova and all that stuff. Yeah, that, that area. For sure. And um. And then we're near near Japantown, I guess. Is near. Yeah, it was a little bit north of Japantown. It was right by right by the gar- It was like we were in the sure, garment district. Sure. Um, and it was cool. It was I. I mean, at that point, I was twenty six, maybe, yeah. and I, I was a little too old for it. Like I'm I think. Out. Yeah. And you've been I, in Chicago how long? I've been in Chicago for two years. Okay, cool. How for long two, were you in LA? Just like a year. So Not I, even. I did eight, I did eight months. In a blackout. Yeah, and I li- I loved LA. <laughs> How long were you in New York? 
I was in New York for seven years. I okay, feel like so I, maybe I should. Well, like, you're going to vote New York because I, well, I always ask LA. Well, I don't know. I, so I went back to New York and did like, this is my first time going back and doing comedy, not as an open micer and yeah. like doing spots and yeah. stuff. And I dug it a lot, but I really liked, I liked the vibe of LA, yeah, but I liked too. the potential of New York, if yeah. that makes sense. Like I'm, I like, I'm all LA. I mean, I was in New York for 15 He's years. So like, and if I would have started stand up for real when I was there, I probably would have enjoyed some of that too. But it's like the vibe in New York for me is just, I like the chaos and I like how it feels. But when I was in LA for eight months, I got a little glimpse of how it feels to wake up every day when it's sunny yeah. and you go and do this and you go and do that. And it can be a really great life. Right. But when you're, if you're not dialed in in LA, it's really lonely. Not lonely, but you're Very. just like, you're like, yeah. you know, trying to get these spots, of, you know, and all these people with their, I like to call it mediocre mm -hmm. stuff, but they're just doing it because they're already in the industry or whatever. Right. And you're trying to get spots. And if you're not getting them, it's like, dude, going to an open mic in LA is oh, brutal. Disaster. Dude. Don't I even go. Like, go to, your, go to your kitchen. I couldn't do I couldn't go do it. I, yeah. I was really lucky in LA. I moved out there and then someone like had me open for him and like opened yeah. a lot of doors for me. Yeah. And so I could work like I worked the improv and flappers. Sure, and sure. so like that yeah. was there and that was good, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And not like New York where you can do like I d d billion spots that you can do a billion spots. Yeah. In a night. And also yeah. in New York, you realize it's like I did like, I did about 10 shows last time we were there and three of them were like good pro shows and then yeah. a couple were just good, great bar shows. Sure. But um, even the bar shows, everybody that was on that show, you could tell they were either writing on a show or doing something where their writing was so lean. Right. And some of it just kind of boring, but just good. It gets up, just punched up. You know what I mean? For sure. And you know, LA is just womp, womp, womp. It can be long, drawn out, fatty stuff sometimes. So it's like, so yeah, little, it makes you a little, New York makes you step up. If you go to like even an open mic at the Creek or something, you know, you got three minutes, you better throw like a joke together. That's like, makes sense. Yeah. And I like, I never experienced in LA any, any of the like, yes, I get that people are, fakey and that people are working sure. shit but I never and probably it was because of the level I was at that I didn't have to worry about that yeah. but like I went to like a lot of parties where there were really cool people who were yeah, just really too. cool yeah. you know well, the thing is about LA too is people don't realize maybe you do maybe because you were there for so long but like Angelinos are the coolest people on the planet mm -hmm. people that are from LA are dope it's mm -hmm. like but the, everyone else like us included it's like Think about it. Everyone comes to LA. I want to be a wrestler. I want to be a porn star. I want to be an actor. I want to be. Well, it just keeps growing. Yeah. And you put all these psychos together that no one wants. <laughs> no one wants. Like I want to beat the game too. Yeah. I want a job doing well, exactly what I want. Everyone's being. Right. Everyone's being it's told insane. no all day long. I mean, and that element of energy is really interesting, especially to teach. If teaching yeah, I would classes imagine. was well, interesting. Yeah, heard the yoga. Yeah, I mean, the most I had, competitive. I had amazing students, but you know they're being told no all day long. They're too fat. They're too skinny. They're too. Their writing is not good enough or too good. Mm -hmm. I mean, all day. Whether you're a musician, a writer, an actor, whatever. So yeah, it's inter it's interesting energy to teach to for sure. It's powerful and a bit defeated at the same time. And I think energy wise, like geographic, the geography of. LA versus New York versus Chicago. I feel like the geography of LA does feel very rejection-y. Yeah. Because you have to go so far, so yeah. far. to get to one thing. Well, yeah, right, yeah. What Anywhere. people need to realize yeah. too, it's like, it's a big, de it's a desert right. where there's basically, besides the entertainment industry, it's Home Depot's and Carl's Jr's <laughs> and hot, Jack in the Box. It's a strip mall. I mean, it's disgusting, actually. There's no, like, to say it's a culturally I, rich I place. I disagree is, 100%. Is, well, I know, but she's, eight, she's Daniel's son, 818, like, receiving. I was 818, what? But, you know, it's, but I'm saying, if, wherever you go, there's, you're going to find good and bad. But LA is definitely, can be a little intense in a way where you're like, man, I just really want to go, like, just even the restaurants. You go to a restaurant, they find out about Barada or something, as an example. Like, geez, they take it to this, uh, just this end of the world with it where it's like, Barada, we got it everywhere. It's at the coffee shop. Barada, Barada. It's like, yeah. where they don't even care what it tastes like or where it's from. There's like, got we know everyone's eating this, so I'm eating that, okay? Yeah. But then, some people open little special places, and there are beautiful restaurants mm -hmm. there, but you gotta go into the nooks and not, you know, people just wanna go hang, you know Right, I mean? well, in New York, you can, not know what the hell you're doing and do something. Yeah. In LA, yeah. you can't not and know also, what you're doing and New do York, something, which I, is also... It's dangerous. It's, not, it's dangerous, <laughs> but it's... Yeah, because you're going to end up making some bad choices. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's... I mean, then that's good and bad. Like, the bad of it is it's a bummer to not be able just to kind of go wander, but the good is, like, then you have to, like, actively sure. participate yeah. in what you're doing. Well, you the can't. thing with me, what happened to me in New York, even though I made, like... I have two groups of friends um, 
you know, that I've had my whole life. And the, the ones that I met in New York, I mean, as much as we partied too much, but like, you know, you, you go through the highs and the lows there and the highs are so high. But the thing that's distracting about New York, New York and the more homogenized it gets, the, <laughs> the easier it is to not be there all the time for right. me because it's getting kind of that way. We're just more like mediocre. But what happens is you get distracted because in any given night, I would be rubbing elbows with people that were really doing things, and that would make me feel like I was kind of doing them enough. Yeah. If I'm at a party at six <laughs> in the morning with Stephen Dorff or like you know Bill Maher, like the people I'd run into and, and hang with and do drugs or right. whatever, all of a sudden you know they go home and take a Xanax, and I have to go work brunch. You know what I mean? And then and <laughs> yeah, I and yeah, I yeah. and I spent all the money I have for the week that night trying to buy something to show off, and these people are just loaded. That's the way they live their life. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to stay in your lane in New York. In LA, people make you stay in your lane. Yeah, you're very, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Until I mean, then you make your little group of people. It just changes as you get older too. But when I, I was there ninety seven to two thousand and twelve. Oh, wow. So I had I mean I came up in theater there. I did a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Made a lot of good memories, but also you know drank and did drugs and you know hung out. But it was it was New York in the ninety seven to two thousand and four was the sexiest time in New York. Oh, ever. it was amazing. I'll bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything was before it was before like basically before Facebook and all that stuff. And like yep. if you knew of a cool place, it's because someone told you, mm -hmm. not For because. Sure. So I heard this place is dope. We're all going. I can go because I have money. For that sure. didn't exist. There were clubs late night after hours. Doors would shut. You'd stay there until eight in the morning. Now that shit is all, you know, it's like commercialized. There's this one speakeasy that when I was the first like cool place I went to when I was in New York and I loved it. And I, anytime someone goes, they're like, Was it Gaslight? Which one was it? No, uh, Bar Central. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Love sure, that place. Sure, sure. Fucking love that place. And anytime someone goes, I tell them to go. And I, the, my last friend that I recommended going there went and she was like, it, wasn't it, like it was cool, but like there were a bunch of people there. Well, and I was like, the, yeah, because everybody, oh, well, everybody knows is, about it. I mean, the yeah. thing is, it's like it's everywhere though. So you can say just like sh people that are from, like I bet you know Bobby Buds could say Chicago used to be amazing. These people, For you sure. know, someone like yeah. that that's like from there and appreciates like. Will you do your Bobby Buds impression? No. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm here to offend you. No, I love him. I love it. So, uh, I, I love when he hosts. He's like, so what's up? We got any, uh, what do we got here? The, I, there's no more problematic person that I adore oh, more he, than he's Bobby. The sweetest. <laughs> well, I did a show with him in Milwaukee uh, that uh, called Subjective where you where you have to write an artist statement before you perform. Oh, my and God. And to hear an artist statement from Bobby Buds was just the, yeah, because uh, I love him and I adore him. And yeah. the, it was brillant. It was yeah. a brilliant artist. It <laughs> summated him perfectly. And uh, I love I love that. I mean, because what happened in New York, and maybe it's happening everywhere, and that's just me getting older, too. But, you know, there's a difference between gentrification and, like, a global money takeover when, like, people from Europe are coming in with billions of dollars and literally just ripping a neighborhood apart. Yep. To, now, now all, all it is is an outdoor mall for millionaires. Mm -hmm. So when I'm there and I have to deal with some piece of shit that I would only meet at a Panera in the suburbs is now living in the East <laughs> Village, right. it doesn't make me miss it as much. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and going but, back was very, like... Yeah, it's very different from when and, I lived there. And like, I talked to some some older comics there that like before all comics were kind of in the same Illuminati together, whatever you want yeah, to call yeah. it. But now there's just little clicks of like mm. people that like this and people that like that, and all these bar shows where people that there there are comics in Brooklyn that don't do shows in New York, right? You know what I mean? And that's just that's not good for anyone because it's horrible when you get a club date because you got kind of big on Twitter and then you bomb your dick off, you know, or whatever. It's just, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know Brooklyn at yeah. all. Which but you know, is it's just weird. It's, it's all kind of. It's not the the goal isn't to be like I need to get to the show here. It's like there's all these different ways, right? And but when I was living there, I wasn't doing stand up. I was doing improv and theater. But I just saw it changing, and now we were just back. And it's just like, wow. It's just people out walking around going, oh, my God, I love that I live in New York. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It, it, there's, no, there's no interest. It's, there is some people, I'm sure, but... Anyways, it's fucking Instagram. Maybe I'm sorry man. I keep talking so much. <laughs> time Instagram's out, ruined everything. Dude, Time Out Magazine actually ruined it. As soon as they started mm. putting things, as soon as that started happening, check it out. This is where to go. And then those people pull up and they'll do anything to get in there. Yeah. People used to palm me at the Standard Hotel to get upstairs to Le Bon, the, the place on the yeah. roof of the Standard. And my friend Camille ran and he was like, oh, she, he is not going. You know, I was like, the total you had to be cool to get in there. And people would beg to get in there. Like, just like, I'll give you $500. Yeah. It's like, no, go to Tribeca to like a stockbroker bar. You know what I mean? It's whatever. Those people used to get pushed out. <laughs> Yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're, the now they're just there. Isn't there like anymore. we got bottles, we got bottle service. We own the club, whatever. Just, yeah, uh, it's like a bad <laughs> Law and Order ep episode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, uh, what else? So you were in wait, what when, else? With you were in LA for I was how in LA long? for 13 years. Okay, 
Yeah. Just, were you yogaing from the get there? I was yogaing from the get. I started with... my practice at 18. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I went out there to, my stepdad was Jim Cash, so he wrote a bunch of amazing movies. And I went out there to act because I was on stage all through high school. I yeah. went to ACT uh, in San Francisco for college, sort of. It's not really college. Yeah. You sing and dance and yeah. move around and yell and scream. Is that like, the, <laughs> is that like the AMDA of? It's, uh, it's American, American Conservatory, Conservatory Theater. Theater. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, LA seemed like the place to go because it's where my contacts were right. as far as my family. Um, but yeah, as soon as I found my teacher, uh, and my stepdad passed away, the shift happened pretty quickly. She, she's the only um, one, no, one I know as an actress. I was like, who are you represented by? She's like, ah, CAA or something. Like, well, like what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, Gershwin. I don't, I don't know what it was. It was, was WM, WME. And it actually she's like, I don't want to do. It didn't help. Yeah, because I don't want. Because they represent famous people. And I was this little <clears throat> nobody right. who just basically been on stage. Um, and so I just sat on a shelf, you know. Yeah. they Until I got a good manager and then. My claim to fame, honestly, is my Tostitos commercial, where all you see is my belly. And there are four of us, and the bag is just passed from belly to belly, like from person to person. Amazing. She's like, I, made I so was much doing money Shakespeare. Off that yeah, right. <laughs> Party of five. Oh, God. Party of five. Diagnosis murder. I did a movie that won something at Sundance, which I will never utter out loud. I'm sure you <gasps> can Google my name. You got to tell us off. No, air, dude. I can't. I'm not telling Please. You. But talk about villains. <laughs> With your podcast before this, yeah. <laughs> you should tell these guys to Google my name. It was I thought it was a pretty terrible movie right actually. Now. The fact that it won something is hilarious. Yeah. My God, what was it? Just <gasps> ridiculous. If I, I find did it, ridiculous I'm shit it in you. L.A. Ridiculous. Right. Hillary Lockwood. Yeah. B movies left and right. B movies left and right. Commercials crying on diagnosis murder. Speaking of B movies, you ever woke Man. up with like, if you're watching HBO or something, probably before all the streaming, but then like it goes into late night and like the, you hear that weird soft porn and like that scares the <laughs> shit out of you. Because it's like, it just sounds like there's like, that's what I wake up. take you away and it's like, like oh, oh, and you're like, oh, what is happening? <laughs> Who broke in? <laughs> Who's breaking in? So what, what a funny breaking! What a funny B and E prank yeah, that would be to yeah. break into someone's house because you see them sleeping on the couch and then just fucking on their oh floor. Oh my god! <laughs> what do you got, James? Uh, I have fall of nipple. No, oh, I was in that too. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I only show. I'm only showing three. Yeah, that's uh, credits my friend. For you. Fall of Laura, nipple, oh, time no. of your life, and diagnosis murder. Time of your life. So I don't you, even remember. You what might that have was. escaped. Uh, no, it's in there. It's it's definitely you know, it's, but, you know what the best thing about IMDb is? Though, is people sold. can't tell you, oh, I was doing a, an independent movie this summer. Right, like, it's on, on the internet, it. baby. Don't lie to me. <laughs> it Everything started. It's its first title was Tap Water. Okay. I don't remember what it was actually. What was the last they thing you wanted to ask, Whitney? We wanted to ask you something before. Um, oh, no, I definitely wanted to ask. ask, ask. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> Dude, best, Dude, on, be, listen, best onion ever. Shut, cover. stop talking. Aaron got me. <laughs> I've talked so much. Aaron got me so sick this week that I've wanted to kill him all week. Do we ever come in here and not say I've wanted to kill you all week? I've been tired since 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's love, baby. Because I got his stupid gold. Well, the, yeah. well, your kid so had no, it first. I don't first. mind that you're talking so much. Cause Am I talking too much? No, it's good. But there was the last. There was something else I wanted to ask you, though, before oh, I... Oh, the sex parties, Jersey. Uh, no, Buddhism. We talked a lot. I mean, I loved what you come, what you said about your Buddhism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you it was like, it I was thought white, I had it. White it. I thought I nailed, white girl, it. nailed it. Nailed it. Were you chanting, uh, though? No, no. I read How to Practice, and <laughs> oh, that was shit. it. And then I was like, I got it. And then I would meta... The, the thing that I told you about <laughs> that is very embarrassing. I would... I would medit. I was very like heavy, heavy meditation, but I yeah. would do it if like when I was on a plane, especially I yeah. would sit <laughs> and meditate and just meditate on how cool I looked and how much yeah. everybody must be envious. <laughs> yeah, I know the whole that time. That's what you're she's thinking. She's able to meditate and relax on this plane. Well, let me meditate on this. Oh, that is not monster. selfless just, desire. <laughs> just a monster. Just a monster. <laughs> Well, then let's get into I want to talk to you a little bit about your article. Sure. Because sure, sure. we have three, probably four different perspectives, obviously. Another woman here, me. Um, one, what did we, we go over? I wanted to ask you, did you write an article before that, that this was kind of coming back around with it? Or were you explaining something else before? Or that's the whole first article? Um, that's just the, the one okay. that I, because it's not even, it's a, it's a thing, medium you, anyone can write and put a thing up. Gotcha, so it gotcha. wasn't like anyone, no one paid attention. Like it wasn't a big, it was just, I was trying to reconcile, because he was at Rosemont, you know, sure, and I, I, was I was trying there. to reconcile if Bert 
because I'm doing my fir- right now. I'm doing my first middling week at Zane's. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. And I was tr- I was thinking if Bert would have asked, would have said, "Hey, will you open for him? Mm-hmm. Would you do it?" Right. Gotcha. And I was trying. I was trying to say no to myself because, uh, like, ideologically, I think no. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to support whatever. All of that. Mm-hmm. But the answer is yeah I would because they're just like to sort of sum it up like they're the two major points in it are I am not at a place where especially with like Bert mm-hmm. where I could turn down a thing sure. because it would be a risk of never working right again sure. for him sure and then also ultimately I think what he should be do- there's no my opinion is my opinion is he shouldn't be performing, shouldn't be performing. I am like uh, but it do, it doesn't it doesn't matter sure because so are, he is yes. and so since he is i think it would be great if i think what he should be doing is giving an opportunity to uh women and non-binary uh comics mm-hmm. and taking them to places so that people see them sure and then he's at least bringing people up with him right well, what i can say about what i from what I know people that know him really well. Right. And so there are certain things, for one, we can all agree. I mean, obviously, just one, this is what I think. The way he handled it in the beginning, just like how I had amends to make and you just wait because there's that one you don't want to make, that mm. was the one he didn't want to make and it bit him in the ass because he should have been very forthcoming about all that right. when he got therapy 12 years ago and had his children, but he didn't. He goes, no one's mentioning it. Nobody's mentioning yeah, it. Yeah, let it go. Okay, so that's the lesson he learned. And, of course, the apology wasn't everything everyone was happy with. The way I feel is that, one, anyone should be able to do comedy regardless just because, you know what I mean? And that's and you, and sure. I'm sure that you are friends. I mean, we're friends, and, you know, like there's other people you know that we, we all have different opinions of it. Yeah, of course. And um, I do agree that, when, I, you know, but the thing is, do you agree that he has put other women on shows in the past, like, TV shows. Totally. And, you know I, I, mean? I think the, the suggestion, the that idea of only having women and non-binary comics open for him is uh, would be a really great way for him to be sure. like, hey, yeah, God, yeah. I fucked up. I, mean, I it, fucked up. You know I fucked up. Here's what I'm going to, here's a way, right. here's a way. Yeah. And then the clubs that he's going to get to see these people. And then that also sort of like mitigates the feeling of, yeah. oh, I have to you do know, this job that I, I have to like if yeah. you don't feel comfortable, yeah. Sometimes, I and think, also, if, yeah, no one should have but, to open. But, but you know, him, I, but. I know that. I mean, because I knew who was opening for him because uh, Mike Vecchione is a good friend of mine. Right. But um, he brought a woman with him as well. Right. But, Lynn, um, right. Yeah, Lynn. Mm-hmm. But then the guy was from, the guy that he picked up was from Acme because he was hosting and he liked right. him a lot. And he's probably going to take Dale. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, but it's like I, the thing is, I know. W- believe me, I I just I, that's not the kind of person anything I would ever do. Totally. I think it's all it's all it's been it's gotten pretty crazy. But um, I also wonder, I want to ask you this. So being like Tig and Nataro being that they came up at the same time. Sure. And being in like I call it the Illuminati or whatever you want to call it. Like knowing, they, they know each other. They know each other's right. story. Right. They've been through the struggle. How long do you think she knew about all that and decided not to say anything because she didn't want to lose a TV show or do what she was doing? You know what I'm saying though? Think mm-hmm. about that. You know how long, just because if, if, uh, Sarah Silverman knew, Tig Notaro knows, and they all know, and they know that he does this weird thing, and she didn't like it, but she also didn't step up. So I, I feel like at this point, it, a lot of it, it's fucked up for sure. Here's what I know. Yeah, I know that nobody knows anybody's secrets, but the people that are keeping the secrets. We can, mm. I mean, the, the stories can, they will and do have 18 different versions. Right. And I, and I said this last week, and I mean this, I, it's not okay to do anything bad, evil, aggressive to anyone else. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter who they are, what they are, gender, etc. It's not okay to overpower someone in any way. It's manipulative. It's an abuse of power. And they happen all over the place. It happens in sure. yoga constantly. Sure. Which like sucks. Like and like people, yeah. Because you would think, you know, that's a... a a place where it shouldn't happen. Oh yeah, there's smarmy. I've I've well, taken from some. All over the place. It's, it can be super creepy. You made a real. But but oh. I but I also and I said this last week as well. I also believe that we have opened ourselves up to an era now of so much social media and so much commenting on everything that everybody gets to have an opinion. We just do. Everybody gets to have an opinion. Right. You do. We, yeah, because for freedom sure. of speech is a real thing. And that's what What really you know, touched me that you wrote, too, is we know, uh, I, we, I know a girl that uh, 
couldn't have been a bigger Louis fan, mm-hmm. but she's also, you know, an advocate for like, you know, just like sexual abuse and trauma of women, all this stuff. Because and she it, was, it, it yeah, broke. I mean, she, victim. no one was a bigger Louis fan than her. Mm-hmm. Right. But she's now because of that, which is a really sad part about the whole thing, is that people, like you said, that you should be a big fan of, that it's like you, you can't have it anymore because you, you're, 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 uh, you know your values of it are, are bigger than that, right? You and know I don't know so- that I, I don't know that I, I don't know that I long for the consumption of his work, not, 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 and maybe, not yeah. to say that his work his work is influential <laughs> on everyone who sure, sure. did anything, you know. And I think, yeah, there is like a hindsight. There's this hindsight bias. It's like, oh man, I do. There, there could be like some self flagellation for participating and, and, and right. enjoying his stuff but I can't do anything about that but it sucks yeah. it does suck yeah. like the truth of it is like god damn it yeah. I yeah, but, I like loved him yeah, well, I really the thing liked with, him with this, now. this girl that I know it's like the thing is what that what situations like this and like Dan Harmon and other people have done to her because she's really in that world of comedy writing and all that stuff right. you know it's made now she can't see any. she can't see anything but that Right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, she's you know, when I hear things like, well, I didn't come because there was too many men on the lineup. I'm like now. But in like, but the people you like, like, it's like, why, why do we all have to? Why do we all have to be? You know, what I mean, when's the last time someone tried to book me? Uh, just, you know, what I mean, you know, what I mean, like this, right. that, on that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So I, I get pretty frustrated with it. I know what happened was pretty was fucking bad. Yeah. With all that. And I wish that it would kind of go away, but it also can't go away when people still feel so strongly about that it wasn't really, uh, he didn't really forgive, he didn't ask for forgiveness or whatever. Well, I, I find myself in a tr- tricky predicament with it as well because I went through something very similar, not from someone who was as big as as Louis was or is, um, but someone who was in a position of power, who was a more prominent comic than I am, who, mm. I mean, it was... Yeah. Com- it was you know what's so ma- this is what I'm worried about now I mean I probably will never be famous but um, the thing is is like I'll admit it right now I mean the, the time that I was what knock they knocked on? three times Jesus Christ it's not even wood <laughs> is it knock wood Jake? I don't know I asked Joe Kilgallen <laughs> he got it for <laughs> Joe Kil- <laughs> um, no but um, you know I'll say right now I mean if someone wanted to go into my shit I'm not saying that it's condoning anything Louie did but I mean I definitely it was in situations, you know, those, and we've all been in, like, when you're making out with somebody, you just met or whatever. No, 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 no. That, even that's, because all that stuff is like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I feel that I, it's like when it's like first base, second base, kind of in that area or whatever, when right. by the end, but like, you wear, basically like wearing someone down, that's, that, that that's considered a thing now. Yeah, it is. And, and, yeah. But feeling, feeling it out, you know, for lack of a better term, I guess, is different than what Louis did. No, of course, no. And I, I'm not, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying and the people, same thing. Well, I know, I know. But people need to hear that because people still need to be able to make that those small mistakes to figure out where yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, because I, I think people I will start coming after, other, like if someone gets mad at me enough and tries to ruin my marriage or something, it might be like, I hate that Aaron guy. I mean, someone could say something stupid like that. You know what I mean? Right. And, but I, it's like what Hillary was saying about how I think it just snowballs. But the, the main issue that you're talking about like that should be talked about and that's why we're trying to talk about it well what does happen though with the with the wearing down the year to, that's exactly what happened to me with that dude. yeah it's, and i know and it I, was, and like, and it was I, two hours of right constant and then finally you you just go fuck it it's gonna be fucking easier just to let him do whatever so i can like fucking go to sleep and leave yeah and i but i think you know like in coming yeah that's horrible like being a teenager too like think about like you know ninth tenth grade i mean that's all the boys i mean that's why it it should be taught not to do that but like that's how it is it's like come on i mean also yeah to frame what i was saying i meant mostly for teenagers yeah Yeah, that's when you figure out how to do that like if you're an adult and you're trying to wear someone down that's a totally you know, different but, right but totally. what I, and, and that's yes. a, kind of a bad way to put all i'm saying is there are many i think a lot of people could admit they've been in situation where it's like, oh i came on pretty strong or whatever and like stuff it and i know there's no tolerance for it but like it gets pretty like some people are like i think i can use that let me see is that good enough i think we got some traction okay, okay. no i'm serious mm-hmm. but i i don't mean any just but i i'm just not like that but right you know what i mean but also i think that um do you think that because he got pinched and was brought out which is good do you think a lot of people had time to clean up their closet like people in, that are in those big oh that's exactly the person that you i'm know? talking about the day 
that there I remember there was a specific day that like everyone posted and it's social media shit and social media is yeah. fucking real and I yeah. hate all of it but in this regard the day me too like blew up yeah instantly heard from him yeah. instantly of heard course. from him and yeah. I and I told and I told him no we t- like cuz I called him the next morning after it happened and told him how fucking wrong it was yeah. and then he the language was like oh i you know if i ever made you uncomfortable i'm right, so right. and it was Covered like you completely yeah. did yeah. you did the complete wrong thing yes. and you don't get to do that no. and no i'm i'm not going to say i'm not going to put i'm not going to put you on blast yeah yeah because a you're more prominent than I am, and right. I don't want to be the person that isn't what I want my identity to be. I don't want to be the person who blew up this yeah. person's right. spot. And also, it's not going to blow his spot up because yeah. he's still going to get to do right. the shit he gets to do because of the way he does it. And no one cares. And yeah. that's the part that's like, we have to, yeah. it, we have to gotta address well, that. that like that's, that's the piece I, that has to change without yeah, question. Yeah, we got to right. address yeah. that. I agree with that. So, for example, like the Robin Theater, like we're doing there. You know, I'm really careful about who I book there. Sure. And then, uh, I, of course, I was messaged by someone that was like, um, I have a list that you need to look at before you book anyone. And I go, really? So I looked at it and everyone that was on it. And I was very surprised some of the people were on it. So I asked the girl, I said, this isn't just personal beef, is it? Because you're telling me not to book these people because they're predators. Right. And, and, she, and I go, you need to break down every one of them. And then I found out later with this, this just this circumstance was that Someone had leaked something about this girl, but then all these other people kind of spread it around, mm. and that is also really bad. Oh, yeah. But but it, but it was something like about her having like a video camera and her like yeah. pay, pay to look at me, whatever. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. Cammy. but uh, so I so I actually so I said okay, I'm not booking any of these people because me and the owner are because the owner is the sweetest guy and he's like I'm not on either side, but he is more on. He's definitely doesn't want not want anyone that's abusive or on that road of at course, all. He, no. So he's great. So we sat down. And I go. I have a question about two of them, and I found out they really shouldn't be on it. And the girl was like, "Okay, well that was hearsay." I go, "You got to be careful. Like these, you know, but we all got to be careful in general. Just we got to make sure we're talking about real shit." And I think another good illustration of the of where two two years ago I was doing a doing a show somewhere. Um, it was a sweet, like sweet fucking gig. It was in inside a like theater in a hotel, and the hotel rooms were stupid. There was a fuck shower, and there was like a shower just in the middle of the room, and it was a <laughs> shower. Fuck, it was a fuck shower. <laughs> it was one hundred percent a fuck shower. Are we checking in, baby? Yeah, know, definitely. I'll give you the real. name. It's a <laughs> really for the cool fuck place. Shower? <laughs> there are people who lived there too, and I was doing crowd work at the beginning. And I was like, "You live here?" And I was yes. like, "Do you have that shower?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, yeah. "I was like, what do you do? You call it a fuck shower?" Like, yeah, we call it a fuck shower. We're living. Yes. And I get there, and I was I was opening for a friend, and I get there, and the guy who was booking it w- me- says hey to my friend, and then we're meeting for the first time, and he goes, oh, I'm a hugger, and hugs me. Mm. And I hugged him, because I'm not going to be like, no. Right. And then, luckily, he had a podcast, and so later we were doing his podcast after the show, we were very drunk. Um, but I said to him, like, you can't, you can't do that. You right. especially can't, you shouldn't do that in general, but you especially shouldn't do that with women because I didn't have a choice. Right. I tried to hug you. W- wait, now? Yeah. Yeah, but we're buddies. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a buddy <laughs> thing. <laughs> right. No, but yeah, it's like, sure. I'd never met him, and he's yeah. a booker of a, sh- he's yeah, giving yeah. me money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's that kind of, that no, no, no. people need to get that. I like, there is a level of I call that the fish stick. Where <laughs> when someone hugs you and you're frozen fish stick. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah. Oh. You, or you, you say, don't hug me. Tell you, or you can say, right, and then you do that, but and then it's shit, and then you can never come it's back. Weird, and you because yeah. then you're you're back. uncool. You it's don't, so uh, fucking uh, tricky for all of us. Cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I hear you talk uh, when you're saying to it's like you're you're not trying to not get booked by be, be, you know you got to stand up for what you believe in, and it's like you, these people start using like I'm not booking her, I'm not doing that, or I'm booking me or whatever, just because all the shit everyone has these agendas and yeah. things just need to. Cal- I hope they calm down. I mean, separate I, breeds separate. That's just the way it is. The more we separate things, the more we decide this is bad and this is good or they're bad and they're good, the more we're all screwed. Because at the end of the day, it's going to end up human beings against probably the planet, the weather, instead of like this group against this group. There's too many groups fighting all the time. And And it's not helping anyone. And I'll say that it's hurting everybody. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's not it's not discourse. It's 
a battle. It's yeah. a battle. Yeah, it's like a civil and war. I, and I appreciate the necessity of battles and of revolutions to get things done. Sure, but, sure. Uh, I hate saying something, something. But, uh, so I appreciate that. And I also think that there needs to be an ability for discourse to yeah. happen. Sure, sure, for sure. And well, I... Go ahead. I appreciated your honesty in your article. Thank you. It was no, tough. It was I really rough. Did. Yeah, I mean, because I'm glad you did too. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about have, it. Wouldn't have thrown that out there. Yeah, they and it was have... a and luckily it was received well, I think. And if it wasn't, I haven't heard anything about but that. But then they're full of shit. Because the truth is at the end of the day, wh- what you said is what most people would do. It's the truth. Right. And it's also a and bigger comment on the system that we're in it's like shit what do you think of, uh, in, yeah. what do you think of yes. Kristen Toomey's thing that she put on Facebook did you read it was that where she apologized what, what, what she, was that she, she's kind of like I, I like what she did because she's basically saying in some ways just so she wanted to, she wanted to be as we get better or whatever like the way I've got tried to be a better person right you want to hold yourself accountable she was just kind of talking about herself but it's like I hope I never did anything like this to anyone or whatever you right know what I mean using positions of power or whatever it was pretty pretty honest you know what i mean yeah i think that that's that's huge and to be able to be and to say and to to ask for help to say help me learn but to also show up for it yeah and this isn't directly with i'm 100 percent no she will but i think there's people who are like who take the who take the route of oh I'm sorry if I ever did anything just tell me if it's wrong getting As ahead of to, stuff what's that getting ahead of stuff yeah yeah but then also being like I want to be better so help right. me be better as opposed to I want to be better I'm gonna work to be better do yeah, you right. mind if I actively yeah. ask as opposed to oh well, you should have told me it was wrong I, right. I, I wanted say, you to tell me it was wrong I'll say this too like if I was blame. like right <laughs> if I was like buddies with Louis C K I would have been his friend that would have been like dude you really need to you know, talk about this now, you know, if we, if I knew all his business, because that's the thing, it's like nobody, I think, you know what I'll say, maybe he, he definitely lacked humility for sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And and I've given up. I used to give apologies when I was younger. It's like, I'd be met. Like she always says, it's like men, you know, she's going to meet me and her boys. It's like, yeah, boys, they always get angry when they're in trouble and they're wrong. Like Mm -hmm. we, we switch everything and go, I didn't do it. Or we do this. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think he needed some skills in that area too. I just, I'm just so conflicted with this. Like you can't do comedy. And in this, and it's like, I, I just know that there's so many pieces of shit doing all kinds of things that I I, I should be like, I don't want somebody changing my faucet unless I know about him. You know what I mean? I I don't know. I just feel like, but but he's doing it. Yes, he's yes. doing. Yeah, it. and I think that but the there people needs, are saying he can't do it. You know, I think there should be the room to say that. Yeah, no, and say it's, no, say it. Clearly it clearly doesn't. It doesn't matter. No, no, it does. But it does matter to tons of people. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? I think it does too. Yeah. No, it absolutely. Does. That's what I'm saying. It I'm does. not disregarding that at all. I'm just saying that, sure. like, I think that. I mean, just you know, I think if uh, I don't know, you just you want to be able to do comedy. I don't know. Well, there's a couple. I mean, it's like there. Let's say there's three positions, right? right. There's there's like the I don't have any. There's I don't have any influence career-wise for anybody else. I'm not in a place where I can really do anything. There's, sure. I can do some things, but I need people to help me do the things. And then there's, I can do whatever I want. Sure. And I think there's a privilege that exists on both of these sides where there, when you're someone who's here, mm-hmm. you don't have the ability to be as transparent as someone who's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or as transparent sure, as someone sure. who's here, and I think that I hope that that, that was conveyed in the essay yeah, too. Yeah, no, I think it was. That that's, there's a whole group of people who kind of get, you know, like you know, part yeah, of, I, you know, part of me too is I'm just like you know talking. About, I'm like glad that wasn't me. That's stupid. Like I mean, I'm glad I don't do that. You know what I mean? It's just I mean, or right. I'd be like if I didn't know anything about comedy or anything, I'd be like that's pretty dumb. Right. I mean, that's not good behavior. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just be a, that's just be a good person. Don't be a dick. <laughs> don't be a dick. Yeah. Yeah. We've been on for a long time. Yeah, I want to go have. over a few things with you. Wait, and just to plug all your wonderful stuff. Uh, oh, my God. Where am I? I can do it if you don't mind. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, you don't have to look Let's it talk up. About, yeah, let's talk about the album. I'm doing, so the album comes out on the 18th. Yay. Who recorded Very that for terrified. you? Uh, I, uh, Stand Up Records recorded it. Well, no, actually, so the Paper Machete which is a show at the Green Mill here in Chicago. Sure. It's great. I think one of the, I love their family. Yeah. So they recorded it. Stand Up Records is releasing it. This kid over yeah, here. Yeah, James. This kid Le- over here mastered the shit out of <laughs> it. It sounds great. Thanks, it's James. beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. Stand Up Records is distributing. Um, and so that comes out on the 18th. Uh, it's called The Bakery Case. It's all like the, 
kind of the, the core of it is surrounding this case that was before the Supreme Court a couple years ago <clears throat> called Masterpiece Cake Shop versus the state of Colorado. Huh. A couple of gay dudes wanted to get a cake. The baker was like, oh, no, yeah, yeah, it yeah. ended up before the Supreme Court. So yeah, that, that paired with my experience of an almost marriage relationship and then my sister getting married, like all kind of tangled together. And that's sort so of the backbone of it. Right. Um, and... I'm super proud of it. It sounds, I mean, it sounds great. Uh, hopefully it's funny. I it think is it, funny. It, I don't know. I've heard it a million <laughs> times. I am just Hello. terrified. Good. It's scary, dude. It is scary. That is scary. scary. It's bold it, like, and brave uh, and badass, though. What if uh, you could pre-order it, pre-order it, because, oh, God. I. But yeah. it was really, really fun to record, and I feel super lucky to have so many people yeah. that helped make it and happen. That'll be available everywhere, basically. Everywhere, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can perfect. pre-order on iTunes now, but then it'll be on, like, uh, Amazon and so, Google. Uh, and uh, Sirius XM actually does this, like, first play thing yeah, where yeah. they, like, yeah. play yeah. an album in full. Yeah, 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 and they did that, la- like, in the middle of last month. Oh, that's month. great. Yeah. Congrats. Um, they did that so that... So all of our Lansing, okay. Michigan, and Michigan listeners, too, yeah. Whitney will be at the Robin Theater in... March. March, March, coming 20, up. Get, March you, 20, get your tickets. Get your tickets so, now. The, the link is the link is up, and it's gonna yeah. be a killer show. And um, and then I'm doing uh, the night before the album comes out on the 17th. I'm doing a uh, I'm doing like an album release show uh, slash party that's called Whitney Chitwood and Friends that I'm doing at the Newport Theater here Yay. in Chicago. And there's a bunch of kill just crushers on it. And then I'm gonna do my new half hour at the end. So, That's so awesome. Jesus amazing. Hosting what and a then. treat that is. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, baby. Half hour. So that's all we got, yeah? Yeah. Um, I, what do I got going on? Um, Laugh Factory on Sunday. And then at the end of the month, at the beginning of November, I'm with Marty DeRosa the 9th and the 10th. We're going down to Louisville and to Cincinnati. And then oh, got a bunch of stuff this winter. Aaron Putnam dash Aaron dash Putnam dot com for all my dates. <laughs> what about you, baby? Hilltop Yogi's. Uh, Brian Cust coming. October 25th, 26th, and 27th. In Chicago, the 25th. Lansing, 26th and 27th. Brian's an almost 40-year yogi. My friend of almost 30. World-renowned, amazing dude. Check him out on poweryoga.com. You can download my classes there as well. Yes, and uh, buy our house in Michigan, please. Yeah, will you buy my house, please? She's been on the market for 30 days! So I can sell it. Good night. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I'm bored with I you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Love you. <laughs>